In the previous video, we talked about one kind of reactive postural adjustment, or RPA, called the ankle strategy. In this video, we're going to shift gears and talk about the hip strategy and the stepping strategy. But before we do that, we need to have a discussion of the vestibulospinal reflex, or VSR, and the vestibulocolic reflex, or VCR, which is very similar to the prior. But before we get into these two reflexes here, let's discuss a little bit of anatomy. So over here on the bottom left, we have the vestibular apparatus. These are the three semicircular canals. Recall that those sense rotational acceleration. And then here we have the two autolithic organs of the vestibule. We have the utricle, which is closest to the canals, and then we have the saccule. And these are responsible for sensing linear acceleration and also static tilt of the head, either forward or to the side. Any sensory information regarding head position, head movement, equilibrium is collected by these organs of the vestibular apparatus, and that information is then relayed through the vestibular nerve, where it then fuses with the cochlear nerve to become cranial nerve 8, or the vestibulocochlear nerve. Up here you can see the vestibular cochlear nerve bringing that sensory information into the central nervous system. Any auditory information goes to other parts of the brain that we talk about in other videos. But the vestibular information comes into the vestibular nucleus on the ipsilateral side. There is a vestibular nucleus on both sides. And we can blow up this one right here and take a closer look and see that it's divided into four major parts. At the top we have the aptly named superior vestibular nucleus. This one over here is the lateral vestibular nucleus. Down here is the inferior vestibular nucleus, and this is the medial vestibular nucleus. The ones that we care about are medial and lateral. Now if you look right here, vestibular branches of cranial nerve 8, these axons are going to synapse with neurons here whose cell bodies are located within the medial vestibular nucleus. You can see over here that those axons then project from the brainstem inferiorly as the medial vestibular tract, which makes sense because their cell bodies are in the medial vestibular nucleus. In any case, those tracts, which are axons, descend through the brainstem, ultimately into the spinal cord, where they then synapse with other neurons that control muscles in the neck. Now you'll notice that the neurons that come from the medial vestibular nucleus ultimately are going to control muscles of the neck on either side. So the axons come down here and they exit on both sides of the spinal cord from level C1 down through C4. If we then look at the lateral vestibular nucleus, again, vestibular branches of cranial nerve 8 are going to synapse with neurons whose cell bodies are located within that lateral vestibular nucleus. And those axons then project down, right, as you can see right over here. And they project down as the aptly named lateral vestibular tracts, or LVT. So these axons descend through the brainstem and into the spinal cord, and they actually bypass the first half of the cervical spinal cord, level C1 through C4. And they continue downward until they get to the level of C5, where they then synapse with lower motor neurons that go to muscles in the arms and the back. So the lower motor neurons that are controlled through this tract are going to be at the levels of C5 through L1. And those are going to be involved in the muscles of the arms and the back. And obviously with the arms, we're really only considering C5 through about T1. Okay, T1 down through L1 is going to be involved with the muscles of the back. As we continue going down through the spinal cord and get to the levels of L1 through S2, these axons of the lateral vestibular tracts are going to synapse with lower motor neurons that go out to the extensor muscles within the proximal legs. So the hip girdle, we could be talking about the adductors, the quads, the hamstrings, etc. And there are some axons that continue even further down, but we're not going to concern ourselves with those. So where do the vestibulospinal and vestibulocolic reflexes come to play? Well, these two reflexes come to play when a perturbation's amplitude is large enough or the base of support is too narrow to handle the perturbation. In other words, ankle and subtalar muscles alone are insufficient. Remember, a true ankle strategy really just uses muscles that control the ankle or talocrural joint and the subtalar joint. And when you have a situation like this, these muscles become insufficient to maintain balance. And so now you have to utilize these reflexes. And by means of this picture over here, we've actually already hit these two reflexes to some extent, so we'll just breeze through these next two bullet points. 
first reflex here is the vestibulocolic reflex or VCR. This is a reflex that allows maintenance of balance, particularly with the head, when postural sway is detected. And the detection, remember, is through the vestibular apparatus, and the maintenance of balance is through movement or contraction of neck muscles. So again, the sensory part is cranial nerve 8, specifically that vestibular component, and the motor parts through the cervical spinal nerves from the levels of C1 through C4 and they control muscles of the neck. But remember, their control is bilateral. And this is the component of this up here that's through the medial vestibular tracts. Okay? And again, the purpose is to maintain an upright head. So if your head bends too far forward, your neck extensors are made to activate. If your neck bends too far back, your neck flexors will activate. And the whole goal is keeping your head upright so you can see your surroundings. The second reflex is the vestibulospinal reflex, or VCR. This is probably the one that most people are familiar with. This is a reflex that allows maintenance of balance when postural sway is detected. Again, the detection is through the vestibular apparatus. And the maintenance of balance is through movement or contraction of trunk, arm, and leg muscles. Okay? Again, the sensory component is cranial nerve 8, the vestibular component. And the motor part is the thoracic and lumbar spinal nerves. And technically, we should also throw in uh, the lower half of the cervical uh, spinal nerves, so C5 through C8. I forgot to put those in there. But they're, of course, a component of the brachial plexus that go out to the muscles of the arms. Okay, So basically, C5 and down. And remember, this is the reflex that's ultimately controlled by the lateral vestibule of the nucleus and tracts. But their control is only ipsilateral, unlike levels C1 through C4. And the purpose of the vestibulospinal reflex is to initiate a hip or step strategy to maintain balance. Again, with the VCR, I can maintain my head position all day, but if my legs, arms, and trunk don't react in a way that keeps me upright, I'm going down to the ground. And so when you think about these losses of balance, it involves keeping the head upright, but also the rest of the body has to react to stay upright. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.